In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a simple, powerful health bar system for Unity that you can use in just about any game. It doesn't necessarily have to be a health bar either. This will work for mana bars, endurance bars, or whatever it is that you wanna represent. You can see here on my screen, I've got two capsule characters, and this one can damage the other one by left clicking on them, or switch over to a heal ability and heal them. That makes the health bar go up and down, and I can, of course, even do that on myself. If we look at the scene view, you'll notice that there are no health bars visible, and that's because the way that this works is using a world or a screen space overlay canvas. I almost said the wrong thing right there from the beginning. So we have a health bar canvas script on a screen space overlay canvas that automatically creates a new health bar instance for every NPC or thing that we want to assign health to. You can see here we've got a health bar script with a background image and underneath that image we have a foreground that's just a fill amount slider that goes up and down. This is just using a filled image. Make sure that you have it set to I think it's got to be on wrap mode repeat or something. And then you can fill the image up and down, have that down below as a child, and your health bar just kind of works. Let's take a look at the code though and see how this works so that we can have a whole bunch of NPCs spawn. In fact, before we do that, let's see what it looks like when a bunch of NPCs spawn. There we go, a whole bunch of them just appeared and I can click and damage all of them with my awesome AOE ability or all of them within a range. So let's take a look at the code now. The health bar script is pretty small and pretty simple. It does use a networked character that has a networked variable for the current health, and that has an event that fires off whenever the value changes and refreshes the health. And then when we first do our binding of the health bar to this character, and this is just a character from my multiplayer mastery course, you can use whatever type of thing you're passing in as long as it has health. You just need to have an event on it that you can register for and refresh the health. And then of course, refresh the health at the beginning just by setting that fill amount to the percentage across that you are of your new health. So this right here is the new percent of health divided by the max health. And right now my max health is hard coded at 100. You would have to change this to be your actual maximum health of your shared character. This will change soon. It's just not at that point yet in this code base. So we've got this here. How does this get bound up? Well, if I hit shift F12 on it, I can find references and see the add health bar method. This gets called whenever a character added on my client. So this, if you're doing a multiplayer game, you'd want to do this on each client in the UI system. If it's a single player game, you can just do it whenever the NPC or the thing spawns. You assign, add a health bar by instantiating a new health bar, prefab right there, and then binding that data where we just pass in the character. And again, that's just so that we can read the health amount and have an event where we get back what when the health has changed. And again, it could be mana, it could be any other thing. You could have a mana and health and then get a health bar that shows both of those or have separate health bars for each of them. Then finally, we add them to a list of health bars. The health bar list is a list of tuples of health bar and shared character. This is just a it's kind of a temporary use data structure that has multiple items. It's kind of like creating a struct or your own class that had a health bar and a shared character, but it's one where we don't have to go about defining it. We just know that it's a set of two items. We've got item one and item two, and you can have more than two. You can have, I think it's like up to 10, but I never almost never go beyond two. And even at two, a lot of the time, I'll switch over to just using the struct to make things named. But a lot of times I'll start with the tuple and then decide what I want to use later. And that's where this is right here. So we add them to that list. And then in the update, we do the magic of keeping those health bars in position. So we loop through all of the entries here, all of our tuples, and then we use the camera.main.world to screen point. If you're not using the main camera, you should switch that. If you are using the main camera and you're worried about it saying it's expensive, it's cached. It, this is outdated. I don't know why it still says the that it's like that. Maybe it's just for old versions, but this is cached and it's not actually a performance problem. But we pass in the health bars, item two, which is that shared character. And we're using its transform position. So that's its world space position, getting back a screen position and then setting the health bars position. And that's all there is to it. Now we've got world space or not world space, but screen space UI represented in the world. I can click on my NPCs, I can move around. And these bars are of course, extremely easy to reuse. I can just rebind them with to a new NPC and then give them a new, uh, 
All right, I just AOE'd my own character and killed myself. So I think it's time to wrap this up. Hopefully this was helpful. If so, you want more of these short little videos with some useful info, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button, subscribe and share them. Drop a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.